What's going on gamers? Today we're going to be going over how to merge your nether and end into your main world folder. But before we get into this tutorial, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can get notified of all our tutorials we upload, just like this one. One of the key concerns for nearly every server owner is being able to provide a server with the absolute best experience for their community. Knowing how to properly optimize a Minecraft server and configure can be difficult, especially if the server owner doesn't have a lot of experience in doing so. In trying to create the perfect server, many owners will use a spigot or a paper server as these not only optimize the server but allow for use of plugins. While spigot and paper are great, a point of confusion for many users is the way that they keep the nether and end world files. Whereas default Minecraft server holds the nether and end world files within the world's folder, spigot and paper nether and end world files are kept in separate folders outside of the main world folder. Having the nether and the end files separate from the main world folder may not seem like much of an issue. However, if the server owner changes their server to run from the default Minecraft software, or they just want to run the regular world on single player, they're going to find that their nether and end have disappeared or reset. Luckily, these can be merged back into the main world folder. Today we're going to be going over the steps you need to take to merge your nether and end into the main world folder. So, that you can use your world in a non-spigot or paper Minecraft. Minecraft holds worlds inside folders named after those worlds. For example, if your world is called Apex World, all of its files will be contained in a folder called Apex World. If your server is running spigot or paper, and you've ever gone into your server's FTP, you might have noticed that alongside your world's folder, there's two additional ones with labels underscore nether and underscore underscore end appended to the end of their names. These are the folders that contain the nether and the end connected to the main world. For example, if your main world is called Apex World and you've explored the nether and the end, you'll see the following three folders that correspond to your current world. Apex World, Apex World underscore nether, Apex world underscore the underscore end. And while this world would work with the default Minecraft server or in single player, the nether and the end would be missing. If you don't convert these folders at least. To fix this, you're gonna need to convert the nether and end to a format that the default Minecraft server and Minecraft single player can load. We're gonna start off by heading to our Apex control panel. And from here, you're gonna to want to stop your server. Once you've stopped your server, of course, and your server has come to a full stop, you can scroll down to the name of your world, which will be about halfway down the page. So once you scroll down and you see the section that says world, you're gonna see that there's a name in there. If you've named it or changed it at all, it'll be something different, but by default, it should be something like world, or it might be something like paper, underscore, a bunch of numbers, and then another underscore, and then another set of numbers. You don't need to change your world name. So keep it as it is and just memorize what the world is. Once you memorize your world's name, you can head into FTP file access and log in with your information. Then you're going to see three different folders with that world's name. You're going to see the main folder, you're going to see the nether folder, and you're going to see the end folder. Then, you can click into the main world folder. You're going to be checking for two folders. You're going to be checking for the dim and the dim dash one, which will be your nether and your end folders. Now, if you don't have them, this is because you don't have a regular Minecraft world. In this regular Minecraft world folder, when I click into it, you're going to see a dim one and a dim folder. Now, when we head back to our papers folder, and we click on the up, it'll take you back to the main directory. And we see our other worlds. We're gonna wanna click into the nether folder or the end folder because we're gonna be doing a step that is the same for each folder. When we click into one of these folders, you're gonna see a checkbox. Go ahead and click on that and then click on move. Then on the directory, Take out the nether and the underscore. 
you're going to be moving these folders into the main folder so that we can make it look like it's the example that I just showed you a few moments ago. Then you can click on submit. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and move back and then you can click on up to head back and go ahead and check on your main folder and check that there's a dim one folder. Then you can click on up. And now we're going to be doing the same to the end folder. So go ahead and click into that one. And from here, you're going to want to click on the check mark and then click on move. And then you're going to want to take out the end so that it looks exactly like the main folder. And once you've backspaced that, you can go ahead and click submit. And once that moves, you can go ahead and click back and then click on up so you can go back. And then you can click on the main world folder. Once you do click on that menu folder, you should see two new folders that say DIM1 and then DIM1 also. These are your end and your nether folder that you can play this in single player or you can play this on a regular version of Minecraft. Now, you might run into a situation where your folder already has a DIM1 folder, but it might also have the nether and an end folder attached to it as well. Not necessarily in the main folder, but if you do click into the main folder, you're going to see that there's two DIM1 folders. So what do we do in this situation? Well, you can click on the checkbox and then rename them. To the end of them, you're going to want to add literally anything to it. I'm just going to add null, but if you wanted to add a random set of numbers or you wanted to add like F or something random like that, it would work just as well. Then click on submit. Then click on back and you're going to want to do the same thing to the other DIM1 folder. Check the name and then click on rename. And then you're going to want to name it anything else like no. And then click on submit. Once you've done that, you can then go ahead and click on up. And you're going to want to go ahead and click on the nether folder or the end folder. The step is the same for each process. And you're going to want to go in and click on the box. And then you're going to want to move these dim folders into the main folder. So make it look like the exact same folder as the main folder. So slash forward and then submit. Then click back and then click up. And then go ahead and head to the world or the end folder. And then click on the dim one box and then click on move. And then you're going to want to change the name of the folder to the exact same name as the main folder. Highlight and then click back. And then once that's the same, you can click on submit. And then you can click on back. And that's all you need to do to have a main folder. So when we click on up and then we go into the world, we're going to see that we have four new DIM1 folders or Tim new DIM1 folders on top of our old ones. These new ones are going to be the ones that you're playing on the server. If it has one in there that you've already been playing on, then that may not necessarily work when you have a single player world or a regular version of Minecraft. So you could check those boxes of the folders and you can delete them optionally if you don't need them or you know that you haven't been playing on them and that your server has been using a different nether folder. So if you run into any problems with this, you can always head to support. If you're not sure of what you're going to need to delete, you can always click on the bottom right of your screen and you can always enter your information to talk to live chat. When I say we have 24 seven support, I mean, we have 24 seven support as an apex coworker. I can always hop in a channel if I'm having an issue with a video. And I know that I always have the help that I need because of our awesome support staff. So always make sure to reach out if you're having issues with any server management issues. Well, folks, that's all I've got for you today. And as always, I hope you have lots of fun. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.